Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sanjin. Today we're going to talk about your superannuation and the things you can play around with, like the little levers that you have to play with. In this video, I'm going to go through three key things. The first one's pretty obvious, but we'll go through it anyway. But three key things that you can play around with when it comes to your superannuation that should give you a little bit more control and help you adjust it a little bit to your life. Now, this is not financial advice. This is just me going through the levers that you have access to. Because I notice when it comes to superannuation, people, you know, us Australians, we tend to treat it as this ethereal thing that's just out there. I don't really need to know about it. I just know it's generally growing. I get a letter once a year from the superannuation company and they tell me it's going up. But you know, that's that's okay as a base level, but if you want to get a little bit further along in your personal finance journey, there are a couple of other things that you should probably be across, and I'm going to go through them, and I'm also going to talk about, you know, the mechanics of how it works, the benefits, but we'll also touch on the risks, because don't let anyone tell you about the benefits of something in personal finance without also calling out the risks associated with playing around with some of these things. So let's get into it. Now this video is the second out of three videos I'm gonna do on superannuation. So I've already done the first one, which is around the basics of superannuation that you should be across. This video is about the different levers you can play around with. And then my third video, which I'll do in the future, which if I have done, I'll put a link up here, is about my superannuation strategy. Because I'm also quite new, relatively new in terms of my superannuation strategy. I've been trying to view things out, but I've settled on one and I'll go through why I'm doing what I'm doing and how it works for me and how I guess it can set you up to think about what you could do for yourself as well. Now, the first thing you can change is the obvious, which is which superannuation company you're with. Now, not only that, you can also change which superannuation product you're with within that particular company. Because each company like Australian Super, Host Plus, Uni Super, Q Super, they all have within themselves different products that you can also get. So you can already see where the complications are coming from. But the Australian government has come to everyone's rescue with this thing called the My Super Comparison website slash tool, where they compare all the My Super default products. So you can already hear from that language, it doesn't have every single superannuation product in there, it just has their default My Super products, but it's a good starting point in terms of comparing of the default products you can get, of the different, I think the, generally the balanced products you can get from each superannuation company, how do they all compare? And the site lets you compare the fees, the returns, and tells you if it's a closed or open fund. Because remember, some superannuation funds, you have to be like an employee of a company or some way connected to that industry to get access to it. So you can go to the My Super website and you can have a look, but it's not comprehensive is what I would say. It, helps you compare the default products, but doesn't show you all the products available. So for example, I know when I go to the website and I look up the Host Plus product, they show the Host Plus balanced superannuation fund and it's paying an annual fee of $628. Now I can tell you hand on heart, that's not what I'm paying because that's not the Host Plus product I have. I have the Host Plus index diversified option, which has a much lower annual fee. And yet, you could be on here and you wouldn't know that because it's not a product you can see as in comparison. So that's what I mean is it's a handy tool and I hope they add more superannuation products to it over time, but it's not the all-in comparable tool out there. Now the next lever is how much money you put into your superannuation account. And in this bit, I'll go through the different mechanisms the benefits and some of the risks associated with putting too much money into your superannuation account. Now there are three mechanisms you could say. The first is the concessional amount that's put in by your employer. This is sort of the default amount that's already occurring. If you do nothing with your superannuation, this is what's currently occurring. It's basically whatever is in your contract with your employer when they gave you a salary and they said, this job is $80,000 a year plus super or $80,000 a year including super. What they're essentially saying is the amount they're paying, it includes 10% of the superannuation or whatever they're paying plus 10% of that will be going towards your superannuation. And it goes through as a concessional amount before tax. 
meaning that money gets taken from your payslip, gets put into superannuation, there's no tax taken from it, and when it hits your super, it gets charged at 15% tax. So the second way you can do it is also as a concessional way is salary sacrifice. And so you can sacrifice your salary, which basically means before it even hits your main account, you can send it towards your superannuation. So again, this helps reduce your taxable income because you're not getting taxed on it through your normal way. It only gets taxed when it hits your superannuation account at 15%. So as a comparison, if it was going through your normal taxation channel, it would be getting taxed at like 30%, that dollar. So send it through to your super, you get taxed less, almost half of it. But there are limits. So you can only put in, as of 1st of July, you can only put in $27,500 a year into this. So that's including how much your company is putting in, plus any additional amount you're sacrificing in, it's it can only be $27,500. Now there is a small note about this though, is the Australian government recently introduced the ability to roll over any unused amount. So let's say in the last few years, you haven't been putting in $25,000. It actually used to be 25, it only recently went up to 27 and a half. But let's say last few years, you've only been putting in 10, $11,000 a year. You haven't really been maximizing that amount. What the Australian government has said is, any amounts you haven't used in the last few years, and I'll leave the details above, you can use those unused gains or unused contributions into this year and in subsequent years. So I'll do a video on it in the future. I'll talk about it in my specific strategy. But the key thing here is you can check on the ATO website and you can log in through your MyGov account, go to the ATO website, and you'll see in there how much you can add in, in addition to your 27 and a half, because you haven't used up your cap in previous years. Now the third way you can put money into your superannuation account is called a non-concessional after-tax way, which basically means you don't get the benefits of doing it before tax, so you don't save on tax there, but you do get the benefit of the superannuation company will not, or the Australian Taxation Office will not charge you tax when it gets added to your super. So what it means is you earned the money, it hit your normal accounts, you've then taken that money and you've put it into superannuation. And if you do it right, you do the right bits of paperwork around it, you won't get taxed for that money that's going in. Now there's a different limit to this, which is $110,000. It used to be $100,000, I believe it's gone up to $110,000. So you can put up to $110,000 into your superannuation after tax and you don't have to pay tax on it when it turns up at your super, but you have already paid tax on it beforehand. So it's not that beneficial, I guess, in that sense. So why should you do this? Why should you add money into your superannuation account more than you're currently doing? There's two reasons. The first is the tax savings. And the first two ways of adding money into your account, the concessional ways, will save you tax both in terms of in your taxable income, you pay less in terms of income tax, and you'll also pay less in terms of tax once the money's in your superannuation account and it starts generating income in the future. The third way we went through it, the non-concessional way, won't save you money in terms of income tax or taxable income because you've already paid for it there, but you will save money in terms of, in the long run, you pay less in terms of tax when you're investing that money through your super than, say, if you were investing that money in shares through Comsec or through any brokerage, okay? So in terms of tax, the most inefficient way you can do it, at least to my understanding, is through your brokerage account. So you pay your normal taxation rates when you invest through a, a NAB or a Comsec, the investment gains that you get there. But if you invest through your superannuation account, then you pay less in terms of tax in the long run through any gains you make there. So that's generally one way or one benefit of putting money into superannuation, putting more money into superannuation. The other benefit is the big one, which is around you get to save money towards your retirement. So you put yourself in a better situation than if you were adding money at the default 10% rate. So there are plenty of calculators out there that will help you understand, okay, if I put more into my super, what does that mean in terms of my retirement? That's a whole thing. It's a whole segment, I'll leave links below, but you can check them out and they'll help you calculate it. Now there are risks though. Putting too much money into superannuation or putting any money into superannuation account, you have to remember, you can't touch it until you become eligible, which happens sometime in retirement. It's sort of 60, 65 currently, 
but it's no doubt going to increase over the years and possibly by the time you and I are retiring, you know, if you're in your 20s or your 30s, it could be 70, mid 70s, whatever it is. So that's something to bear in mind. You're putting money away. It's great. It's for your retirement and you're saving money in tax, but, but you can't touch it until much later in life. Now, the second and final lever I'll go into is where you actually decide to invest your money once you've put it into your superannuation account. Now, this is actually something you can play with. It is. It's not something a lot of people play with, and understandably, it can be a bit risky. It can go a bit wrong. So there are three options. The first is you can just let it invest on default, okay? So that money, it turns up in your superannuation account, wherever you've set it to invest in, and if you haven't set it anywhere it's in the default allocation which is going to be a balanced option which is generally going to be a little bit in Australian shares a little bit in international shares a little bit in bonds a little bit in cash and a little bit probably in unlisted things like supermarkets or various things there's various super there's various unlisted assets that superannuation companies can get access to and they'll probably in, be invested there so that's the default option that's where you're probably going to be invested you can change that though and so when you pick a superannuation company you can choose the superannuation product and you can say i you know i i could leave a default or i can choose to have it invested in high growth so that can be an option where they'll put a lot more towards shares basically and maybe more towards slightly riskier options but it's okay because maybe you're generally younger and you can afford to have it in high risk because even if there's a drawdown it can recover over time then they'll have some extremes where they you know you can just put it in cash that's also an option so this is where you sort of go into your superannuation account and they'll say you can have these default options or you can choose how you want to invest in them custom wise from, you know, you can put a little bit towards here, a little bit towards there, a little bit towards there. Then the third way you can invest in your superannuation is you can actually choose individual companies to invest in. Because remember, your superannuation account can invest in a lot of different things, but you can specifically tell them to invest in certain shares. So... It's called investing directly in the ASX generally, but I'll put up some names of what different superannuation companies call it. But the general idea is you can say, with my money in my superannuation account, I want you to specifically invest it in BHP shares, which is different from investing in BHP through your ComSec account, because that's with your non-super money, that's with your normal money. Here you can say you want to invest in particular ETFs or companies through your superannuation money. Now, this is obviously the most customized, but also the most risky <laughs> because you, you can get it catastrophically wrong in terms of where you invest your money. Now, I think if I remember Host Plus, they said they only let you pick from like 300 odd companies. So they, they'd be very narrow. They're like, you can pick, but here's the list. So you don't screw up altogether. So I'm pretty sure you can't pick like, you know, sub $1 companies where you can make a lot of money but also lose a lot of money so they, it's a limited list but it's a it's it's you know they're doing it in your interest they're trying to say look we know you want to try and play your hand in the share market but let's give you a few boundaries and a few guardrails to work around just so you don't catastrophically lose money so what are some of the risks with this last option investing directly in the share market with your superannuation as you can imagine it can all go very poorly very quickly Let's say you picked some mining companies to invest in and then the share market collapsed. China collapsed. Everyone collapsed. Anyone who buys anything from us collapsed. Your money's gone down. And this is not just play money. This is your retirement money that just went out the window. This is the risk. So with more customization, if you don't know what you're doing, your risks can go up dramatically. And that's why I'm happy to invest in the share market with my, you know, and pick and choose with my non-superannuation money. When it comes to my superannuation money, it's not that I trust any professional to do it, because remember, these are ETFs that I'm invested in through the Index Diversified. It's more the case of I don't trust myself to do too much with that superannuation money. And, and for some of you, the money that's in your superannuation account is actually the most amount of money you've possibly seen. And that's not a shot at you, that's just the case where for a lot of us, if we don't touch our superannuation, it can actually end up being a large amount of money. And you don't want to get, you don't want to take too many risks with that money. So 
Look, no, you wouldn't be blamed for just leaving it in the default option or picking one of the pre-selected options. You gotta be really keen. You gotta be really keen to get into the investing directly in the stock exchange and picking your own shares with your superannuation money. I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just giving you general life advice. Only pick that, that third option around investing directly if you really know what you're doing and you really, you're really happy to risk your superannuation money for it. And that's really it. When it comes to superannuation, there's obviously which company you go with and then the different superannuation products. There's how much money you put into your superannuation, whether it's pre-tax or post-tax. And remember, there are certain taxation benefits of each of those. But in general, there is a big benefit of putting money into your superannuation over putting money into your normal brokerage accounts and investing that way. And then thirdly and finally, there is where you actually invest your money once it's in your superannuation. Do you put it into specific shares? Do you put it into the default option? Or do you put it into some of the pre-selected in-between options out there? And if you play around with these, that should account for about 80% of the gains and benefits you can get from your superannuation. So if you want to see some of my other videos around superannuation, check out the playlist up here. And if you want to see some of my other videos in general, I generally do videos around ETFs and personal finance and investing here in Australia. Check out my Instagram page and also feel free to sign up to my newsletter. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.